turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. Oh, there's nothing that's better than you. There's nothing that's better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Better than you, there's nothing. Better than you, Lord, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Keep that going on the keys right there. Sing out one more time. Oh, there's nothing that's better than you. There's nothing that's better than you, Lord, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. We worship you, Lord. I'm convinced this morning that there is nothing that can keep us from the love of God. And what could be better than that? There is absolutely nothing better than your presence this morning, God. God, we are so thankful for that, God. God, I feel your spirit in this place. God, we worship you this morning. We worship you. Running out. 
volunteer here at Hope Community Church. When you came in the door, you should have received a program. If you didn't get one, raise your hand and someone will bring one to you right now. On the back of the program are events and announcements, so read through those each week, please. At the bottom of the program is a connection card. It's on perforated paper, so go ahead and just tear that off right now. The connection card is the way that we connect with you. So fill out as much as you feel comfortable, and we'd like for each person to do this every single week. At the end of the service, put this in the box next to the door. On the back of the connection card is the way for you to connect with us. If you're ready to serve, check serving. If you're ready to be baptized, check baptism. We also love to pray for you, so go ahead and put any prayer requests that you have in there. At the bottom of that section is called My Next Step. If God's been telling you something this week, or if he gives you some prompting during the sermon, go ahead and write that in there and put this in that box next to the door. First time guests, we would love to give you a gift. So bring that connection card to the welcome table at the end of the service because we have a book and some fabulous lip balm for you today. Check in on Facebook. For each check-in, Hope Community Church gives a dollar to a local, national, or a global organization. Please see the program for this month's organization. You can give to the church by texting 352-444-1771 or putting up, put your offering in the blue box located next to the door. We hope you find the service relevant today. Please stay after for coffee and pastries. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, worship team. That was awesome. Yeah. So last week, <clears throat> I started a two-part sermon series called Hope of, Hope of the Gospel. Or not a sermon series, but a two-part sermon called Hope of the Gospel. And so we're going to do the, the second part of that today. Uh, and we're going to be in uh, Colossians. Colossians uh, 1, 13 through 23. It'll be on the screen. It's on your phones. It's in the, the Bibles that are uh, in the seats in front of you, and even the, the Bibles that you have in your hands. And as, as I read this, I want to encourage you, just kind of just immerse yourself in this description of, of Jesus. I, I, as I was reading through this the, the last couple weeks, I, I just wondered, like, if there were times where, where Paul wrote, and he's sitting there in prison, he goes, Silas, you got to check this out. Just, just go ahead and read it. I mean, as humble as he could, just say, just, just read this. 
you know, read this description, and Silas is probably like, yeah, you dictated it to me already. I'm the one who wrote it. Um, but anyways, Colossians 1, uh, 13. Let's see what uh, the Apostle Paul was led by the Holy Spirit to write here. He says, He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of His beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by Him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in all... For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by his blood of the cross, of his cross. And you who were once alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him, if indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all of creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. As I said last week and alluded to already, that that this this book is one of the letters that Paul wrote from prison, and he wanted to encourage the church to be faithful. Just stay faithful. Don't shift from the hope of the gospel that you have heard, which always boggles my mind that the guy in prison is telling the people outside of prison, hey, just hang in there. Stay faithful. Keep, keep the hope. Keep, keep trusting. Keep holding on to Jesus. And one of the things that I mentioned last week is I said in, in my life, I don't usually shift away from God. I don't usually shift away from the gospel. My tendency is to drift away from the gospel. And based on the head nods I saw last week and some right now, I'm thinking that might be your issue too, is, is we, tend, we tend to drift. And the writer of Hebrews warns us, Hebrews 2.1, he says, therefore, because we know this about ourselves already, he says, therefore, pay much closer attention to what you have heard, lest we drift away. And uh, last week I gave an illustration about swimming in the ocean, and, and I would find a landmark that was either outside the ocean or something that didn't drift with the ocean. Uh, and, and it didn't work to just look at the people around me, because you know what they do? They drift with me. And so I would, I would find that, that landmark so I can go back uh, to, the, to the place where all my stuff's at. Um, well, let me, let me develop that a, a little bit as we, as we continue through this uh, passage. How many of you have heard of a bounded set theory or center set theory? Okay, guy, I knew you would raise your hand. Um, it, yeah, if you don't understand something, just ask guy. Uh, all right, so these are mathematical terms, and you don't have to understand those mathematical terms or, or the theory behind that to understand what I'm, what I'm going to say here. Uh, theologians Michael Frost and Alan Hirsch, um, they, they adapted this theory to, ex to explain uh, f a philosophy in, in ministry of how, how we're going to do uh, ministry. And what they did is they, they used an analogy of fences and wells. Not, not the thing that swims, but, but the, the thing that's in uh, where you get water from. Um, W-E-L-L-S. All right. So let's imagine you're a farmer and you have like a three-anchor ranch. All right. And what, what you're going to do, because you don't want your cattle to wander off, right? And, and you don't want other animals to come in. What you do is you build a fence. Right? And so, so that's how you, you keep, keep what belongs in and what doesn't belong in, uh, in there out. Well, if you had acres and acres and acres of land 
you might not uh, build the fence. Or, or if you do the fence, that's, that's not how you keep your, your cattle from wandering, wandering off miles and miles. So what you would do in that situation is you would dig wells. And you would have fresh water. You keep the fresh water where you, you want, want the cattle, okay? The, the first one is bounded. The, the second one is, is center uh, set. Um, and the, re- the reason uh, that the cattle are not going to wander off is because their very life source is right here. It's right there in, in the middle. And it works really well if you're in a, a very arid environment. Uh, so how does this work within Christianity? Well, Frost and Hurst, they suggest this. For us, the center should be Jesus Christ himself. And, and, and we should never forget that. Think about that. The, the, the fences, uh, the rules, the, the boundaries, our tradition, the, the, the way we do things around here. Do we need those? Well, sometimes. Sometimes I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to throw those out and say, hey, that's not important. But you know what they don't do? They don't give us life. Right. Okay? They don't give us life. The law is good. But the, but the law does not give us life. What, what, it, what it does, is it's like the boundary. It just tells me, oh, hey, Don, you've gone too far. <laughs> you, you're out here. And I go, oh, I didn't even see that fence. Walked right past it. Walked over it. Climbed it. Didn't, everybody else was doing it. So I went, I went in that, that direction. But there's no power there. Your life is, is in Jesus Christ. And unfortunately, here, here's what happens. As, as we tend to drift, what we do is, is we... We find a fence, we find a rule that we like. I like this rule. This is a good rule. I, I know there's all kinds of other fences over here, but I really like this one. And we center ourselves on that fence. And what we do is we find, we find other people that don't necessarily love our Savior, don't follow him, but they like this rule also. And we center ourselves in that and and we we identify ourselves based on the boundary uh which which is not really good and and here i think we ask the wrong questions at least sometimes i do i ask the wrong questions i want to know where the fence is okay oh okay what, what's the boundary how far can i go till i'm not walking into the domain of darkness where the better question might be is where is Jesus working? Where, where, is, where is life? Where, where's, where's the center source? Okay, I'm, I'm not telling you to, to, to wander out there. But what I'm telling you is, is the life is found in Jesus Christ. And what happens when we walk around and, and we're just trying to figure out which boundaries we like. You know what we do? We get used to drinking brackish water. And instead, Jesus says, come back to the center. Come back, come, come back to the fountain of living waters. Come back to the bread of life. That is where your life source is at. And so we got to be centered in Jesus Christ, okay? Don't leave here saying, well, Don doesn't like the, the rules and the laws that are in the Bible. No, Don loves Jesus, okay? Don loves Jesus and says, let's center in that. Well, there's people that are, that are way out here. Okay, I was way out there. All right? We, we're pointing them to Jesus. We're not pointing them to fences. Okay? Point them to Jesus. So all of this is why last week, I spent all last week answering one question. Who is Jesus? Because, because we, we need to get that right. And from last week, as, as you go through this text, and this is not all of who Jesus is, but in this text, he's, he's the king. He's the son of the living God. He's the very image of the invisible God. He is the firstborn. He's the head of the church. He's our source of life. He's the reason why we gathered here today. We, we, we gathered in his name. We're, we're centered in Jesus. And then what I want to do today is, now that we know that we're centered in Jesus, okay, what did Jesus do? And then, maybe an obvious one is, how do we respond Okay, this is who you are. This is what you did. Now, how shall I live 
based on that. Okay, so what did Jesus do? Well, in verse uh, 13, it tells us Jesus delivered us from the domain of darkness. That's, that's incredible. I'm, I'm out there. I had no clue as to where the fence was. I'm wandering way out there. And it says, he delivered us from the domain of darkness. In verse 21, Paul says this. He says, and you who were once alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds. Not a great resume, but he's saying, he's saying, church, this, this is where you were at. And, and, if, and if we talk about, you know, those fences or those boundaries, Paul's saying, hey, you're, you're way out there. And guess what? You were without hope. You didn't have hope to get to that well. And, and he, he, says, he says, but you've been, you've been delivered to that, from that. And guess what? There's, there's no life out there. But he delivered us from that. And then, then it says that he transferred us into the kingdom of of the beloved son. And, and that, that's critical. That is so critical for the church today. We need to know what kingdom we belong to. We, we, we need to go back. What kingdom am I a part of? And, and the reality is we need to look through and we need to look at the king and realize this kingdom is, is like no other. That This kingdom is, is different. We, we live differently than, than other kingdoms. And in fact, this, this kingdom supersedes all previous alliances and, and allegiances. In, in other words, I, I am this first. I'm, 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 I'm a child of the king. Right? I'm, I'm a part of this, this new kingdom. I am, I am this first before I am anything else. Because if I'm something else first, you know what? That becomes my idol. Right? And, and, and there's some great people out here, but, but you're not worthy of worship. All right? not, none of us are. And, and so we need to know what kingdom we belong to. Later in, in this letter, uh, Paul would tell this divided church, Colossians 3, 9, he would say this, because they're part of this new kingdom, he'd say, don't lie to one another, seeing, seeing that you put off the old self. So whoever I was when I, I was way out here in this uh, domain of darkness, he says, you have put that off which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. He says this, Here there is not Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, or free, but Christ is all and in all. Now some of us, we, we were hanging out at the fence, all right? I, I mean, I know, I know some people that, I mean, they were just good rule keepers their whole life. Right, they kind of kind of hung out of that fence. Some of us were like, "Yeah, I was way over there, and I, I didn't even know there was a fence." And uh, so, so, so we're we're way out there. And 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 Paul's saying, "Hey, it's it's not about where you came from. It's it's not your background. It's it's, it's not your history. It's it's not any of this. It's are you in Jesus Christ? Are you in Jesus Christ?" And, and this is why we love our enemies, by the way. This is why we, we, why we gather together. And sometimes we gather as a church where, where you think, there's no reasonable reason for us to gather together other than Jesus Christ. That, that is what we have in common. And when we miss that, I, I want to suggest we become enemies of the cross. Because what we're doing is saying, okay, Jesus, what you did on the cross doesn't doesn't change this and and as we look at this letter and and we look at the gospel it absolutely changes that it, it cha changes all of that this uh, passage continues and it tells us that jesus has redeemed us and forgiven our sins uh, when you think of redemption that refers to the work of christ on our behalf where he purchases us he ransoms us at the price of his own life you, you get to come into the center because Christ gave up his life on the cross. And that secures our deliverance from, from bondage and condemnation of sin. Uh, the Apostle Peter says this, uh, 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19, from the New American Standard. He says, knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold, 
from your fetal way of life. You inherited from your forefathers. In other words, why do you do it this way? Well, that's the way dad did it. And we, and we just do it that way. And he says, but with the precious blood as a lamb, unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. Remember, as a, as a young Christian in college, I, I had this revelation one day, and it seemed quite profound at the time. Some friends were trying to convince me to do something that I was thinking, yeah, I shouldn't be doing that. I, I, I don't think this is, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And as I was sitting there and I was listening to all their arguments as to why I could do this, I'm not totally sure why they all wanted me to join with them, but anyways, I, I sat there and, and I thought, you know what, you're right. You're absolutely right. I could do that. I, 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 I can do that and it probably doesn't even change who I am. But you know what? I don't want to. I, I, I don't want to do that because God has done something in my life. Uh, the, the one who, who has redeemed me, the one who holds all things together as this passage says, I'm going to trust in him because I've, I've found life in him. I don't have this all figured out. I'm kind of like a beggar that says, I know a good place to eat. <laughs> I, I found a place where there's, where there's life. I found the, the fountain of living water. It's not the fences that hold us together. Okay? It's Jesus. It's Jesus that holds us together. I've, I've, been, I've been forgiven. I've been redeemed of, of, of the things you're saying, hey, let's go out and do this. That's no longer who I am. I, I, I used to do those things, but I found life. I found life, and I recognize who I am in, in the kingdom of God and who I belong to. In fact, Jesus has created you for the kingdom. Created you for the kingdom. Verse, verse 16. Uh, verse 16 says this. For by him, this is Jesus, all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. That, that pretty much sums up everything, right? Everything is created for him. All things were created through him and for him. I don't know if you caught that last part. All things were created through him and for him. In other words, there's a relationship that you were meant to have that you might not have this morning, but you can begin today. You were, you were created for this relationship. And if, if you're looking for meaning and, and purpose in life, in fact, strength for your life, it's found in Jesus Christ. You Think, think about that. The creator of the universe <laughs> made you to have a relationship with him him. That's, that's just incredible. You were made for his kingdom. That the, the, the thirst that we have in life, it's quenched by the fountain of living waters. You were, you were created to come to Jesus, to, to have those needs met in Jesus. And my encouragement is stop drinking brackish water. Why, why, why drink the nasty water when you have the fountain of living water? passage goes on to tell us that Jesus has and he is reconciling all things to himself. Verse 20, it says, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. In a similar passage, uh, Paul wrote this, Ephesians 2.15. He says, by abolishing the law and the commandments expressed in the ordinances, that he might create in himself one new man in the place of two, so making peace. Uh, interesting uh, footnote in, in this passage where, where Paul uses the word reconciled. All right, I'm going I'm to let you in on a secret here. He made up this word. He, he literally did make up this word because it, the, the word that he uses doesn't exist in literature prior to this. Paul, Paul uses this word, and then afterwards, uh, they start using this word. Now, now what he did was, was fairly simple. He took, a, he took a prefix, and he added it on to the, the word that everybody was using for reconcile. And, and the best way to interpret it is, is probably to say, you're thoroughly reconciled. 
I don't know what, what Paul really means because reconciled is reconciled. <laughs> but, but Paul adds something on and he says, you are thoroughly reconciled. The divisions between one another in Christ are thoroughly reconciled. And I think as, as I process that, I think Paul wants us to know this is a done deal. What took place on, on the cross is, is a done deal. There's nothing else that Jesus can do to, to reconcile you. He's, he's, he's done that. It is, it, is a, it is a done deal. And if we're not united with God, his purpose is, if, if we're not united in him with, with one another, there's a couple things that, that might be going on. One is I don't understand what Jesus did at the cross. And, and, and there's, there's that reality in my life where there's times where I'm like, oh, now I get it. Now I get it. When you said love one another, you meant it. I get it. Boom. Um, there's a possibility we don't understand or, worst case, we've never applied it in our own lives. We haven't applied what Jesus did on the cross to make peace with him and, and one and one another. And again, if, if that's where I'm at, I could very well be an enemy of the cross. Because Jesus said, this is my plan. This, this is how I'm going to reconcile the world to myself. This is how I'm going to deal with this broken relationship here. This is how I'm going to deal with this broken relationship here. It's, it's on the cross. And Paul, Paul is, is reminding, this, he's writing, here's who he's writing to. He's writing to a multi-ethnic, multicultural, multinational group. And he's saying, listen, church, listen, people. God has delivered us from the domain of darkness. All, all that, that, that brokenness and all that, he has delivered us from that. And he has transferred us. We're way out here. And he transfers us into the kingdom of God. He has redeemed us from the hands of the enemy. He has forgiven our sins. Before I came to Christ, I was a prisoner of darkness. Satan had a, had a claim on me. I was at enemy, enmity with God, myself, and with others. And the Bible tells us I've been redeemed from that. And this, this reconciling, this peacemaking... Uh, it's explicitly clarified in uh, 21 and 22 of this passage. It says, and you who were once alienated, hey, that's me, and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled you, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order, he wants to do something for us, all right? That's what he wants to do for you, church. He wants to present you holy and blameless and above repro reproach before him. In, in other words, one day Jesus is going to say to the Father, these are mine. These, 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 are, these are my people from every tribe, every tongue, every, every, every nation, one people in, in Jesus Christ. And I present to them to you, Father, as, as holy and blameless and above reproach. What the Bible's telling us, yeah, that's a good day, isn't it? What the Bible is telling us is what Jesus accomplished on the cross. It's now in process. He's working that out in us, and it's going to be consummated. It's going to come to its fullness in the coming kingdom. Okay? God is still in process, working on us, but it has been accomplished on the cross. It's in process, and it will be consummated. In uh, 2 Corinthians, Paul elaborates on this, and he tells us, that those of us who have been reconciled, you now have a task. Second Corinthians. He says, all of this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Those of you looking for a ministry, right there, ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. We have a message to, to, to go out and, and share. So how do we respond? Well, Paul says a couple things here. First, he says, continue in the faith. How, how, how do you come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? By faith. Okay? 
his, his grace, you, grace, you experience that through faith. And when Paul says, continue in the faith, I don't think he necessarily, um, I don't think it's limited to, okay, I just got to keep having faith. I, I think it's likely what he's saying here is continue in the faith, continue in the gospel message. Continue, continue to believe the faith that has once and for all been handed down to the saints. He says, continue in that. And so in our context, what would we do? In our context, we go back through and say, okay, believe who Jesus is. Be- believe what, what he did. A- allow that. Come, come to the fountain of living waters. Drink from that, that fountain where Jesus says, hey, if you drink from this, it's going to overflow. Like, like in other words, if, if you're a Christian, people around you should be getting wet. Okay? There, there, should be, there should be an overflow that's, you know, hey, what's going on? I don't know. I just drank over there, and now it's, it's just coming out all over the place here. All right? So, so we, need to, we need to come back to that. You know, cause sometimes we tell these stories, and, and, and it's always like, well, way back when, you know, it was a Wednesday night, and I came forward, and I, and, and I did this. And that, that's a great story. But, but what Paul wants us to do is to continue in that. Continue in that. Continue to have a testimony. It is, it, 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 this is a lifelong thing where we continue to trust in and in be, be empowered by his grace. Second thing he says in this passage is we need to be stable and steadfast. Man, probably lost some people on that. We need to be stable and steadfast. Paul tells us, uh, to mature together in, in, in the faith. In, in Ephesians, he says this, Ephesians 4, 14. So we gather in Christ's name, we worship him together, and he says, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by f- the craftiness of, and deceitful schemes. In other words, he knows that, that we're going to drift, and there's going to be forces that, that, that want us to drift. And he says, hey, come back. Stay, stay focused. Mature together. So that's not, that's not pushing us um, out, out there. We need to be centered in Christ. He's the one that's going to mature us. We, we focus on him. We, we come to the fountain of living waters. We, we drink from there. Last one, don't shift from the hope of the gospel. Don't, don't shift. We're, we're, we're dead to that old way of living. Why, why would I go back to that? Uh, later in this letter, Paul says this. He says, set your minds on the things that are above, not the things of earth, for you have died. You have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Uh, the writer of Hebrews, the, the one who tells us to be careful not to drift away, here's, here's what he says. He says, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, so I get to come to that fountain because of what Jesus did. All right? The, the, the doors have been opened wide. And he says, Have confidence to enter that, that holy place by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is, that is through his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. So, so the writer here, he, he tells us to draw near uh, two ways. One, one was, is a true heart, and then secondly, uh, full of assurance of faith. This, this true heart, that, what does that mean? It means I've surrendered my life to Christ. I've surrendered it to him alone. In fact, when I do that, those boundaries we talk about, you know where they go? Right here. The Bible tells us that that, that they're written on our heart. And, and this isn't just a, an intellectual thing, but where I come and I realize, Jesus Christ, you are my life. You, you are faithful. 
And what I'm, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hold on to that hope. And, and when you're struggling, and those of you going through that struggle, just hold on to Jesus. Just, just hold on to him. He, he, he's your anchor. He's not, he's not, he's not going to let you go away. Just come back and hold on to Jesus. Don't, don't shift from the hope that you have in the gospel. Let me pray. Lord Jesus, we're so thankful. We're so thankful for you. And, and Lord, sometimes we forget. We forget that our life is in you. We forget that we're to be centered in you. And we center ourselves in, in so many other silly things. And Father, I pray, I pray that we'd be centered in you. I pray that if there are those that have not um, come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that, that today would be the day of salvation, that they would just come to you and, and recognize that you died for their sin, you died for the sins of the world, you're, you're the one reconciling all things that they would confess their, their need for you today. And Father, for everyone in this building, everyone that can hear my voice, I pray that we too would confess our need for you, Lord. We, we tend to drift. We, tw- we tend to wander away. And, and Lord, may we come back to the center. May we come back to you. May we drink from the fountain of living waters. Lord, fill your people today. We love you and we praise you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is he. Sing a new song. Who sits on heaven's mercy seat? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all
Father, thank you so much for your word that will not go forth void. Father, it doesn't come back to us and, fill, and leave us empty. It fills us up. Thank you for that. Thank you for that and preparing us to go out into this world and make disciples as you ask us to do. Father, thank you for filling us with your Holy Spirit and preparing us in each way. Father, thank you for your word this morning from Pastor. Lord, thank you for that well that never runs dry, that we <laughs> it draws us closer. Thank you for, for giving us that well. I have a song that, that stuck in my head, just a little portion of it. And if you guys will bear with me, I'm going to sing a little bit of it. It says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. I just think about that's our well. And if we just keep turning our eyes back toward that well, man, all that junk that bothers us, that invades our minds, and that we got to deal with, the lights will grow dim on that. And we'll just look full in his glory and his grace. Man, if we can just keep our eyes on that, our walk will be blessed. We will, we will be filled back up and strengthened and encouraged. And I hope that you leave today knowing that you have that well to draw on. His name is Jesus, as close as the mention of his name. And I'm so grateful and I'm so thankful. Let's pray. God, thank you so much again for another opportunity to come to your house. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your people, Father, that have gathered here today. Thank you for the opportunity, God, that we get to encourage one another in our faith, Father, and to, to Lord, come and get filled up and prepared to go again. Lord, we just give you glory and honor and praise. And, Lord, bless us as we go into your world and we share the light that you have given us. In Jesus' name, amen. Go in peace. Love you guys. See you back here next Sunday.